Here's Cairo Santos now, ready to get this one started. And we are underway from Mexico City. This one taken just inside the 10. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. So here are the Lions now coming out for their opening drive. They're led onto the field by the former Cal Bear and the number one overall pick in 2016, Jared Goff. I tell you what, when he's on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. And some room to work. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. Anytime a team goes on the road, there's always that little bit of fear that maybe they can be affected by the hometown crowd. But this is where game planning really came into play. They talked about it all week. Go in there, establish yourselves. Well, that run right there, that slows down the crowd and gives them a lot of confidence. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. They'll keep it on the ground. Gibbs, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. That's a play to take note of there for the defense. I think in the future, if you're going to try and block him, Maybe you get a guard to help double-team him and try and steer him out of the play. They should have done it on that snap. So their task a little bit more difficult now. Second and 13 that they're walking up on. Back to throw. Goff. He finds his man complete. That's Gibbs. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are. You know, make him make someone miss in the open field. And he is going to lose yardage here. Not at all what they envisioned on third down, three yards in the wrong direction. Just a simple run play there on third and one, but this D was up to the challenge and stopped them, bringing it up fourth down. Jack Fox out to punt here on fourth down. The speedster Dante Pettis back deep to return. And that ball's going to angle out at the three-yard line. A beauty. That's a double win there, partner. You keep out of the return man's hands, and you pin them inside the five-yard line. Pretty darn good. So here are the Bears banked up to start their initial drive. They'll be led out by a first-round pick back in 2021 from Ohio State. It's Justin Fields. So this is what we find out about the game plan and the trust factor, don't we? In this situation, the natural thing is take care of the ball. Run it inside. Everyone cover it. Just, you know, get yourself some room and let your punter punt it out of there. But when you really got a QB you can trust, you might want to take a little shot early and try and create some space. They'll run it here. This is Deontay Foreman. And he's able to get this across the 10 before being taken down. Try to escape the shadow of their goalpost. That helped 10 yards. First down. I guess it's good we can't really read the mind of the defensive coordinator now, huh? Had him pinned back there deep, give up that run. Can't be happy. Yeah, whatever was whatever's in his mind right now, we probably couldn't say over the air. So a little more space to work with here from the 13 on first and 10. Here's Fields. And this is taken in by Darnell Mooney. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. Let us go, man. Let a little break. Let's go. 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 Let
They'll run. This is Khalil Herbert. And he's got some space here. And mark him down way up close to the 40 at the 39. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Pretty explosive run on that inside handoff. And when you're a runner of his caliber, you don't need a big crease. You really don't. But also what we're seeing is an offensive line that's taking charge at the point of attack, aren't we? Not only are they controlling the initial contact, they're actually utilizing what they call the stream the next two to three seconds to continue to move people. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Herbert once more. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Fields now to throw. Right side, Claypool's got it. And he's going to be out of bounds all the way down inside the 15. A huge play there for Chicago. 47 yards. Oftentimes now, offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just tell receivers, find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air, nice chunk of yardage there, and then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Now it's Fields. Completes it left side to the tight end, Lewis. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Here's second and two now from the three. Up the middle they go. Foreman, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Bears. Deontay Foreman, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Bears go coast to coast and finish the drive off with six points. So both sides of the football contributing here early. Their defense forces the punt, and then the offense takes it down the field and punches it in on the short touchdown run. And Brandon, that's good complimentary football, and that's what they're going to need if they want to get out of here victorious. Cairo Santos on to try the extra point. And he's got it to make it 7-0 in favor of the Bears. So this drive spans seven plays, and it was finished off by Deontay Foreman on the touchdown run. Off play action, here's Goff. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. And trying to find Jamison Williams, and it's second down. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right, they did something to disrupt that timing. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Now it's gone. Complete to right. And they're able to get this one across the 35. First catch for him. It's good for a dozen and a first down. Nice job. Nice patience right there. Put him on the right side. Let him work his way across. Put the ball in his hands and let him work his way upfield with a catch. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now a handoff up the middle. It's Gibbs, and he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it, and it's second down. 
You've got to be impressed by the defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. They'll keep it on the ground. Gibbs. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. On third down, it's Gibbs, and he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. Give them the third down conversion, five yards on the play. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Up the middle they go. Gibbs. And a strong run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 35. 41 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. The Lions with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a first and 10. They'll try the air now with Gaugh. That throw taken in by Jamison Williams. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27 yard line. Only needing two yards on second down. They run the counter. It's Gibbs, and he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. I haven't met a defense coordinator yet that thinks second and two is a fun situation to try and defend. Playbook is wide open for an offense, partner. Nice job holding to one after that eight-yard pickup on first down. Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. Now a handoff up the middle. Gibbs, and he is going to have a Lions first down as they're able to convert, albeit not by much, on third and a yard. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. First down, it's Gibbs. He's able to work free for about six down of the 18. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. They'll keep it on the ground. Gibbs. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. Well, that's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving a running back a crease to run through, and has a nice job to hold him just a couple and force a third down. So they need two yards here on third down. Remember, they're already two of two on third down conversions on this drive. Up the middle they go. It's Gibbs, and he is going to have a Lions first down. At least it appears that way, and he got it by maybe the length of a football. 
third and two, right? So this is a situation where low man has got to win at the line of scrimmage, but it's not just the low man winning. It's the low man who's winning with some force, and they had that to pick up the first down. Barely picking it up, but they did. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Here's Goff. Now he's flushed out left. And he wisely will throw that one away. Excellent recognition that none of his receivers were beating coverage and getting open, so he just threw that one away. They'll come back to the huddle reset and try something different. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. To throw is gone. And he's not able to get away. Sacked back at the 22. Demarcus Walker. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. They've gobbled up over 30 yards of turf so far, but a sack knocks them backwards. And that interrupts the momentum they were building. Good opportunity for the defense to escape this drive before they get to the end zone. So now following the sack, Goff and the Lions needing to come up with something here on third and long. On play action, they'll throw. Flush to his right. And he'll just get rid of it. And that drive was going pretty darn well. Three previous times converted on third down. But on that one, the defense rose up and said, enough of that. On fourth down, Goff to the sidelines, and Detroit has Riley Patterson out there for the field goal. Patterson's kick is good, and they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So the margin shrinks there as they get the field goal to draw them a bit closer here in the second quarter. Yeah, nice snap, nice hole. They just want to keep this game close, so give them credit for finishing that one off with three. Patterson back out there to send this one away. From the six. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And, partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. Coming up on a second and six. Now they'll run the option to the short side left. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? Boy, the pursuit there, terrific from the linebacking core. Oh, it certainly was because so many times on an option play, you'll see a linebacker make a beeline for the quarterback and then zip, one cut, and he's grasping it air. But this time, he locked in on him the whole way, took an excellent angle, and his grasp came up with the quarterback. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And here on third down, as a receiver, you've got to remind yourself not just to get to the sticks, but to get past the sticks. Create a little bit of separation before you put on the brakes and come back to the football, and the ball was right on time. Nice execution, nice completion.
They'll run. It's Herbert. And this will be a Bears first down as he's got this up to the 45-yard line. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. They'll go again with Herbert. Down to the 42, second down. A gain of three, second down. Two minutes to play in this first half. 7-3, our score. Second and seven. To throw his fields. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions' 24-yard line. 18 yards on that one, and Chicago has the first. There it is, a staple of most teams' playbooks, the angle route. A lot of times you want to take away that inside route by a back, but when they sell it like he's going to the flat, that is tough on inside linebackers. One false step, and that ball's completed. On first down, it's Fields. Escaping the pressure right. And he is out of bounds. Looks like right at the 15. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. I think the defense surprised him there with that blitz on first down, but give him credit. Stayed cool under pressure and still found a way through the extra rushers for positive yardage. Well done. Throwing again on second down. Fields. And he's got it. And he's brought down. That gain of 15 gets him on the doorstep. First and goal. Partney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole <laughs> cool. lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Let's we'll see who's faster. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. It looks like a jumbo set with three tight ends here for first and goal. They'll run with Foreman, and he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. Deontay Foreman with his second touchdown here in this first half, and the Bears will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. So his strong first half continues as he finds the end zone here for the second time. And definitely good blocking at the point of attack, and you just have to love watching the way he can create space down near the goal line and he's able to take it into the end zone. Santos now to add the PAT. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. That time, a nine-play drive. And it was finished off by Deontay Foreman on the touchdown. Now Goff on first down. Over the middle complete. That's Gibbs. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. Yeah. 
Second and two. Here's Goff. And that's to Amon Ross St. Brown. Now another timeout called for by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. First and 10 here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. He finds his man complete. It's Gibbs. So no gain on the play, and that will bring up second down. Well, he caught it right at the line of scrimmage, and before he could even think about advancing it forward, he got hit. Great tackling, because that's what you're taught. Don't give up yards after the catch, and most offenses make a living off of yards after catch. Those hidden yards that may not go into the score sheet, but they count big for moving the ball and stretching the field. Really nice open field tackle. Here's second and 10. Again, golf. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked up by Jaquan Brisker. And the Bears will have the football as this is taken up past the 30. Well, Charles, you know, so close to halftime there. You throw the interception. Not only that, you do give it to them in plus territory as well. Yeah, they were pushing real hard to try and get something more on the board on their side of the ledger right before the half. Looking at it with 20-20 hindsight, though, might have been better to hand it off a few times, hoping to get something to break instead of putting the ball in the air and, of course, putting the ball in jeopardy. And they'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. Yeah, this will leave them a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. Fields. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. And with just one second remaining in the first half, they'll call the timeout. Here's a give to Herbert. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. So we have reached halftime here in an 11-point contest. As we go up to Orlando now and hand it over to Jim. Due to time constraints, we move you forward in today's broadcast to the... Starting on the ground with Herbert. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. This is Herbert. Just a couple on the ground there. That's going to bring up third and about six. Two yards on the first down carry and then followed up by two yards on the second down carry. Well, that's definitely not going to be enough to get the job done. Wasn't the expression three yards in a cloud of dust? <laughs> now they're going to need six on third down to keep the drive going. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Throwing on third down, Fields. And that is incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Yeah. 
Here comes the Bears punter now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. That's taken on the 25. It'll go as a 42, make it a 43-yard punt. Six on the return. So we get a look at the Lions offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense them saying, OK, the first half was theirs. But now, let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for the second half. Call it a gain of three on the play. And it's second down. Golf. He'll go right back to St. Brown. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. He'll get a dozen there, and the Lions have a first down. Now a handoff up the middle. Gibbs, and he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. 64 yards rushing for him now to this point. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. On second and inches, Goff, and his throw is incomplete. Another attempt, another incompletion, and when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long game or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points, and the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. He's got this complete to Williams. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 25-yard line. But forget the run on third and one. They shock the D and rip off a pretty big play. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Goff now to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He's trying to get it to Amon Ross St. Brown, and that'll bring up second down. Not sure what happened there, but he just didn't get the right read on the coverage that time. Pass wasn't where it needed to be, and that'll send them back to the drawing board. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Goff now looking to throw. Now that'll be caught by St. Brown. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Throwing again is gone. Throw over the middle, he finds Williams. And he's going to be marked down short of the first down, right around the 17. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to make it fourth down. A short game that doesn't get him the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it.
Here we go on fourth down. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. Give them credit. They knew what they wanted to dial up on fourth. They executed it for nine yards, and the offense stays out there. Remember, that was fourth and a full two yards. There's a big difference between that and fourth and maybe six inches or a yard. Yeah, you're exactly right, because when it's that six inches, you just fall forward and you pick it up, right? You just go quarterback sneak. But having to move bodies, that means you actually have to execute because they know what you're going to do. How are you going to make the right play call and get everyone into the right spot and win at the line of scrimmage? That's what they did there. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Now golf. Got his tight end. That's complete. It's right. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Second and goal from inside the five. Montgomery is in for a Lions touchdown. So the first drive ended in three. This time they take it down and punch it in the end zone. So that first drive felt like they were just gathering knowledge, didn't it? Just enough to kick the field goal on the first one. And the second time they put it all together and got it all the way to the end zone. Dan Campbell makes the call. His guys will go for two here. They're going to try and run. And he'll get in for the two points. And that'll cut the deficit down to just a field goal. Well, I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet, said go for it, get it to a three-point game, and they did it. Yeah, and sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call. And he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion. And now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves. Patterson back out there to send this one away. Fielded right around the eight. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. For the Bears offense out there set and ready to go. Their lead down to a field goal now as they start with a first and ten. Back to throw. Fields. To the right side, and he's got more complete. So the completion results there in nine yards, and it'll bring up a second and short. Play action. It's Fields. Buying time to his left. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. 23 yards on the tuck and run. Facing second and short, that gives you a chance to go for a bigger play through the air. But I think he said to himself, why not just handle this one? Get all the yards you needed and then some and made that snap a huge success. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. Field's going to keep it once more. 
Give him three on the keeper there, and it is second down. Well, praise has to go to the guys on the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed him down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. On second and seven, Fields. And this will be caught by Mooney. And they're going to move it down the inside the 25. Now a first down throw, Fields. Got his man, and it's caught for a Chicago touchdown. Chase Claypool, a 24-yard touchdown. And the Bears are able to extend their lead in the final seconds of this third quarter. They went five wide in that offensive set, and racing going three wide is a big deal. To go five, how about the way that they finish things off? <laughs> Did you just fit a race car reference into the game? Zoom, zoom. How about the way that you play? When you go five wide, that means you're going fast now. Zoom, zoom indeed. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. After the touchdown, here Santos to kick this one away. This one fielded at the five. And he will be taken down here on the return on what will wind up being the final play of this third quarter. Three quarters have come and gone. Back now in Mexico City. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. And you figure after giving up that last touchdown, you know, they trail by two scores here in the fourth quarter. This drive becomes very critical. Seven yards there on the first down screen play. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Looking to throw again on second down. Goff. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Tremaine Edmonds, the linebacker. And the Bears are going to take possession of the football. Well, time, I mean, certainly not on their side offensively. They had to take some chances, but that interception will further hinder their already slim chance at victory. Yeah, and you're talking about time not on their side, but it certainly is on the defense's side, and they understood that. They knew they had to press it a little bit, and they planned accordingly, and what a benefit for them, able to pick that one off and hopefully put this game away. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. One play action, Fields. That's complete to Mooney. And he's going to get this down near the 25. Second down and three. A carry for Foreman. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Deontay Foreman, 25 yards. And the Bears are an extra point away from making this a three-score game. An important score there, CD, and now an important extra point because it would make it a three-score game. Love the math there, and at this point in the fourth quarter, Look, we all need next-gen stats, right? We all use them, but we don't need them here, do we? Because that means it's almost a certain victory. 
Now the point after try for Santos. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. They had the short field, and they made quick work of it. Just two plays to get into the end zone. After the touchdown here, Santos to kick this one away. From the 10. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Detroit's offense ready to take over. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Back to throw, gone. And right with it here, over the middle. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. The Lions on third down. They've hit four of seven. This will be third and six. Goff now looks to throw. It's complete to Williams. And he is going to have a Lions first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. He finds his man complete. It's Gibbs. So just three yards on the completion there. And it'll be second down. Now gone. Forced out to his left. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. To throw is gone. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. That's coverage you'd expect to see in a tie game late. Not in a lopsided game like this. They are not letting up. Desperation time for Goff on fourth. Man open, it's St. Brown, he's got it. And he is going to have the Lions first down as they wind up getting 13 there on fourth down. But no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. Now a dump off here complete. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. Second and eight.
To the air again. Golf. It's Williams on the catch. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 26. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But they turn that lead down to just two scores. That's still a benefit to this squad. To throw again on second down. Golf. And that'll be off the mark too far out in front, and it's incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Golf throwing again. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And the Lions are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. So they'll get nothing out of that play, and it'll be second and goal. Pass complete, but no gain. No yards. Yeah. So you file that as unsuccessful. Yeah, you do, don't you? Except on the stats, throwing the ball. You get a completion. You get a catch. Yeah. But still, no, no yardage. Okay. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. On second and goal. Goff. He's got his man. It's caught for a Lion touchdown. Jared Goff to Amon Ross St. Brown. And the Lions have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed. But if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively, though, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drop more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right. And if you have that one to five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more. Now Herbert. And he works his way forward to pick up four yards there. Second down. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as he'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. The field's going to take this himself, and he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. third down they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first all eyes on fields that pass complete to Moore so give him two yards there on the completion and it'll be fourth down partner I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level doesn't it it does and the defense was right there kind of played into their hands so a big one coming now for Cairo Santos this will be spotted just shy of midfield. A 59-yard attempt. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And the lead will hold at 10. So with that miss, Charles, you have to figure their fate. It might be sealed. Yeah, you needed two scores. So you take the field goal first and then worry about getting the ball back. But that may not matter now. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. 
And as the offense begins another drive here, uh, pretty simple, Charles. They want to carbon copy what happened the last time out when they ended their drive in the end zone. You're right about that, partner. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Just score again, but we know it's not that simple because we don't just make adjustments at halftime if you're a good football team. You spend that time on the sideline, you study what's on the notes and the tablets, and you make those adjustments to prevent a repeat of the last drive. Series to series, the best teams, that's how they get it done. And we'll find out here soon enough whether those adjustments are enough defensively. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. First down now, but that clock rolling. Now golf. Complete to right. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. The Lions need to move. They're hustling to the line now. Golf. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Now the question is obvious. Do you try to kick the field goal right here, knowing that you need two scores? I would be thinking about if I were on that sideline. Get the field goal now, try and get the touchdown later. Now it's gone. Open man right side is St. Brown. And he is going to have a Lions first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. But give the defensive guys a little bit of credit. They didn't let the deep ball beat them on that play, did they? No, the, the drag. That guy can be your safety valve. We saw it right there. Yeah, and it picked up a first down for him, too. Whether it's a touchdown or a field goal, whatever it is, they need to score quickly here on first down. Goff now to throw. This is caught. And he is into the end zone for the touchdown. So they still need a miracle with the clock where it's at, but they get one piece to the puzzle done. Still have hope. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. You got a one-score game now probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. The win for the Bears just around the corner. They go down to a knee. So this one in the win column for the Chicago Bears. And we talked so much about the turnover battle determining who wins and who loses. This game, no exception. They didn't turn the ball over at all, and they go on to victory. They look like a smooth operation in this one, didn't they? Because you look at every facet of the game, they handled their business. Offense took care of the football, converted it into points. Defense took the ball away, gave it back to the offense. Special teams right there with them. That's the type of game a coach is going to really love and value. And when they show the film, they have to be careful not to give out too many kudos and kill their motivation going forward.